Well, okay. thank you uh, for joining the You Can Get It talk. Uh, we're hosting this, Christine and myself. You are our guests, all right? Okay. Uh, how's, it, how's it going in St. Louis? What's the weather like today? I'm starting with a weather question. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pretty dreary out there. We're looking at a lot of rain, which isn't great because we got a St. Louis Cardinal game this evening. So the city is looking gray. Can you go to the games? What's the status of that in your, in your state? Yes. I can't remember what the, uh, how many they're letting in at this point. Do you remember? It's like, it, whatever it is, I feel like it's still too much, but I, I can't, I want to say it might be capped at like 5,000 or something along those lines. And I guess, you know, in a 43,000 seat stadium, that's not a huge thing, but they are most certainly looking to, um, you know, to ramp that up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's just still kind of weird, man. Like, like I haven't been to a game. Lux is supposed to go tonight. Um, but like, I just am still so anxious and, and want to do it, but it, it's just been so long. It just still feels so weird. Kind of. Yeah. We were down there for opening day and it was like so crazy crowded and mm, the mass so participation bad. was not what it should be. It was a mandatory mass event but people weren't even like holding it around their necks or in their hands. It was very confusing to us. So we were in our own space pretty far back, like double masked up like champs mm. and we're both vaccinated double. So oh, wow. <laughs> I okay. think the stadium took a little bit longer to get back in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, <good. laughs> Go ahead, um, I was going to say just to launch into, you know, to ex extend beyond the weather, no offense. Um, <laughs> we wanted to talk to you. So, so you can get it right we're we're billing this as the collaboration you didn't know you needed uh but you did need yeah. and yeah. um we're curious what are your guys favorite either collabs or duos of all time we won't hold you to it but off the top of the dome oh i got a couple do you want to think you and first, i got a couple yeah. okay first of all um does we are the world count i love that <laughs> I, I have that record still. Okay. Yes. Does that? But I, <laughs> that counts. Okay. But, but Okay. But still, here's another couple. So I'm on the adult hit station here too. Another thing that makes me feel old. And we play that um, Phil Bailey and Phil Collins. Um, um, I need love, love to ease my mind. Oh, that, that oh, song. My yeah. That's the cover, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Diana Ross and Supremes. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that one is one is one of my favorites, but I'm sure that I even have more. Let me think. Okay. I love hunger strike. I gotta say hunger strike. Uh, I mean, mm. just what the hell? Yeah, what yeah, the yeah. hell? And if I didn't say peaches, I'd be lying. Um, <laughs> they playing grandson with peaches. Oh, there we but go. Then also <laughs> peaches did that track with Kim Gordon. Uh, but Peaches did a track with Kim Gordon that is also freaking unbelievable. But that kind of just goes into like everything Peaches does is really freaking cool. <laughs> or the Pete, the new Justin Bieber song with Daniel Caesar, uh, a couple of Canadians. Uh, that's yes. awesome. <laughs> that collab as well. Now, you would. You yeah, would. That's one I'm not particularly familiar with, but I'm going to trust you, Max. Who, who are you, your favorite uh, movie duos? Uh, I think I, I like, I was listening to a podcast movie the other day and they were talking Ooh, about Rush It Out. Um, um, oh, good. And I love Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. That, that, that goes, brings me back to my childhood. Uh, Christine, who do you got? Who movie duo? I mean, to be honest with you, I can't. I, I feel like this is a little controversial because I know I feel like one of these people went off the deep end a little bit. But I'm going to go with Alicia Silverstone and Stacey Dash in Clueless. Oh. That's, a, that's a big <laughs> okay. combo. Um, keep All it right. in that era though you know because i so anyways but that's like I don't, maybe that's not a classic duo but it's my classic duo no i like that okay got, i'm gonna go classic because i'm clearly the old man here but <laughs> the, the blues brothers i love like the blues brothers were probably my first favorite like duo because that movie my dad like i remember distinctly one saturday night my mom was gone and my dad said hey we're gonna watch this movie don't say anything to your mom. And I remember that movie like blew <laughs> my mind because not just because it was funny, but all of those musical guests, I was oh, like, yeah. how can you get all of these people in one freaking movie? And my dad's answer was, well, it's the Blues Brothers. So mm -hmm. that that was my probably like favorite movie duo of all time, I would think. You know, I think it's funny that you say that and it surrounds your father because my favorite duo is uh, also because of my father. Um, for his 70th birthday this year, we had a marathon of anything that James Franco and Seth Rogen put out. 
<laughs> which is fun because you know being 70 you would have thought we would have gone with Cheech and Chong but my father could not get enough of the interview of Pineapple Express and now him and my mom like quote this movies all over the place it's kind of incredible so that's, that's my favorite duo hey, hey, rec- far recommendation <laughs> far. Uh, for everybody uh, there's an amazing long form profile in the New York Times about Seth Rogen and how like his like key to happiness like it, it take like 20 minutes and read it it's really really awesome. oh I got to send it to your dad send it to your dad and he's yeah. one of he's one of those Hollywood guys that I would believe if you met him in the right circumstances he would be awesome oh, like 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 along. no phony baloney yeah. stuff like he, he seems like he'd be a real I want to make pottery with him um I want to talk to him and his wife about their foundation against all time like like Alzheimer's, I got like they got stuff on a chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd like to get high with them too. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I was getting. Through. I actually have a funny story about that. We were presenting at like a Canadian entertainment award show. Uh, it was I forget I forget what it was even for, but they were there getting like some lifetime achievement award. Uh, Seth uh, Rogen and Evan Goldberg, his um, <laughs> and I made the stupid mistake of being like, "Hey, do you want to be like a little quick pick?" But it was like two minutes before they're about to go on. And Evan just looks at me and he goes, not right now, brother. <laughs> and I was like, respect. I was like, I get it. Like, cause if someone that's that like, me, I'd be like, can you get out of here, please? Uh, that's like very much a Kesha, Jerry Seinfeld moment. Can I get a hug? Like, no, oh. <laughs> not. But I love knowing that like artists have that too, because all sorts of fans are really like pressed when they see you out, you know, especially, living out in LA I'm sure like when people walk up to you at like a juice bar and stuff you're like oh do I, can I say hi to K-Play or whatever you know you just don't know yeah. so knowing that you guys have that experience too with like people you kind of celebrity like that's awesome yeah hey well yeah. Christine I want to ask you uh you're from Chicago Wh- what are your thoughts on St. Louis I just want to stir the pot a little bit oh god oh right okay so this <laughs> is like uh okay I grew up in a in a family that was very devoted to Michigan football. So my rivalries have nothing to do with St. Louis. Like I'm I'm out here like I have an Ohio State vendetta right. supposedly. Yes. Though that being said, I love Columbus and like honestly I do love that city and love playing shows there. Um I, yeah, I strangely didn't have any sense of rivalry except for the general rivalry that I knew about between Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire, which was like, but that was like, a, that was like a home run. That wasn't really like teams or cities, in my opinion. That was like man to man, like who can crush this thing? And then, of course, Sammy Sosa and the corked bat. That was so disappointing. So, yeah, I don't. That's my answer. Those are my feelings. What, what, how do you guys feel about Chicago? Well, I got to say, my father is not born in St. Louis. He's born in Michigan. And my uncle was the quarterback for the Wolverines in the 70s. So Ooh. we are a huge Michigan family. Um, also, because we don't have basketball here, and I loved basketball more than baseball. I know you grew up a baseball yeah. fan. I was a Chicago Bulls fan. Like, I got to stay up later uh, at night if I would stay up and watch basketball with my dad. And I think. Uh, Flay, in some of your songs, you've like dropped John Pax. I mean, you've dropped yeah. basketball players. So I'm sure you were a Bulls fan, right? Oh, huge Bulls fan. And I mean, I, you know, was yeah. growing up. I was I was on the younger side, I guess, but like in the golden age of the Bulls. So I, you know, yeah. we were just like, that's a great time to be like six or seven years old is when like the Chicago Bulls <laughs> are essentially the best thing that's ever happened to the world. Um, yeah, I love the Bulls. And um, yeah, I guess you guys don't have a basketball team, huh? Nah, and and see the the thing with Chicago is my only the city of Chicago, the people of Chicago, dude, I love that place. I mean, love of it. But I hate the Cubs and the Blackhawks <laughs> with every fiber of my soul. And wow. and I and I know that we shouldn't use the word hate right now in 2021 because there's so much of it. But unfortunately, that's just the word that adequately describes uh, those two teams. But I will say this. When I was 13 years old, I got to go to Old Chicago Stadium and see on a Saturday night a Bulls-Charlotte uh, Hornets game in the Michael jordan Scotty Pippen prime. Mm. And I still remember the feeling when the lights hit and the music started. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 
it was just yeah. otherworldly to me. Yeah. And, and it was one of the things, and it was so funny because that weekend I got to do a Bulls game on a Saturday. And then the next night, the Blues were in Chicago to take on the Blackhawks at Old Chicago Stadium. And it was the first time that I got cussed at by uh, a, an adult because <laughs> I was rooting for the Blues and where I was sitting, that wasn't a real smart thing to do. So, uh, you know, learning experience all around. But I love Chicago. I, I love it. We've been there for Lala a few oh, yeah. times and mm-hmm. always had a blast. Yeah. 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 Guys, speaking of uh, the cross section of music and basketball, last Wednesday it was snowing here, and uh, I'm friends with Toronto Raptors head coach Nick Nurse, and he's and I gave him some music lessons, and so he sends me voice notes of songs he's working on. So last Wednesday it's snowing here; they're down in Tampa because that's where the Raptors are, and I get a voice note, uh, and it's labeled "Sometimes it snows in April," which is the Prince song. So he sends it to me, and it's not just a voice note; it's a fully produced acoustic version with backup singers, guitar, piano, he's singing lead. And he t- turns out he, he went to Paisley Park and recorded the song. He hired some musicians. <laughs> he just, and I was like, when did you do this? He's like, I've been waiting for this day to send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing is that? That's incredible. I love that. Yeah. Song. <laughs> um, our our good buddy and uh, former World Series MVP David Fries has mm-hmm. picked up the guitar. Um, the last time he was in St. Louis, he came on my show, and he is in a little trio of a band. Um, and watching him go from home runs to like legitimately working the guitar, not in a you know I strum some Dave Matthews, but like in the <laughs> I can seriously do Tim Reynolds type stuff. It makes me really it's really impressive. Well, the, big hands, but you know what I mean. Like, well, and the thing is, ass. the work ethic is the reason that that guy got to the major. Yep. So you know he's going to be putting in the time to practice, especially yep. now that you know he's retired and has probably a little bit of money. I would assume. Hey you Clay, know. you remember the first time we hung out? I picked mm-hmm. you up and took you to a Cardinal game, and we sat yes. behind um, home plate because Freeze had heard your song and gave us tickets. Like, I, it was our first game. That's so I know. Cool. I was gonna say that. I remember I that you very from well. a different radio station. You did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's really interesting to me, and and perhaps this is just a beautiful reminder in life that like there's kind of a joke about it too that you know like every every actor wants to be a musician, every musician wants to be an athlete, every athlete wants to be a, and it's sort of like it, we're all. To us, to every single person, there is somebody else who is like so cool. And to that quote unquote so cool person, they're a loser and someone else is so cool. And I like that chain of like looking up to other people and being inspired by them. Cause to me, that's like, it's just, it's just fun to be a part of that ecosystem in a very small way. You know, like everyone is somebody else's hero, which is cool. Christine, you drop something profound like that every time we, we chat. It's me. <laughs> um, yeah, I know everyone's uh, got to get back that to... What, that's what radio is, really. Yeah. Drop uh, drop uh, profound bombs everywhere everywhere you turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to let you ask us one question, uh, and then we'll all go back, back to work. I know uh, I'm putting you on the spot here, but you guys are professionals. You can ask yeah. us anything you possibly want. Wow. Well, okay. All right. Well, because the first thing that I was going to ask you something each get to do a question? with the, Yeah, I think we should. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, here's here's a, here's a good one. Do you guys remember the first time that you met, and where was it? And uh, I would assume it went probably pretty well. Uh, yeah. Um, do you? I think it's. Is it uh, when we? So I do a podcast up here called the Michael Much Podcast, and we had Christine as a guest because she toured with our mutual friend Lights years ago. And our manager, Ashley, said, oh, you should have uh, Kay Flay on the podcast because she's like awesome and really interesting artist. She has a lot of cool things to say. So you came by the studio where our Kells were recording. Is that right? Yes, I came by when you guys, you guys were recording Knocking at the Door, right? Yeah, we were, we were in the middle of that session and you right. happened to have popped out for a minute. What yeah, were you doing we were- in Toronto? Do you remember what, what, why you were in town? I was doing promo. I was there and actually, funnily enough, my, my band was like, had low level resentment because they had to do the long van drive from <laughs> uh, Toronto all the way across to Winnipeg, Oh, which is like, drives, which is hours. a really bad drive. Um, yeah. And, but we were on tour with Mother Mother. Mm. So that was, we were opening for Mother Mother in Canada doing like a full Canadian tour. And then, yeah, we had mutual friends. 
Max and I met to do this, to do his podcast and just kind of like, I remember I went out with the band and we got some like beers and food mm-hmm. afterwards. And yeah, just like, I think an instant, uh, an instant kinship is what I would say. Yeah. And, and, and I think I remember specifically being like, you made the right call by not getting in the van. Cause we've done yes. that drive from Toronto to Winnipeg. And I was like, you, you nailed it. This is good. <laughs> It'll be an hour and a half flight or a 24 hour car ride. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that was the first time we met. All right. Very good. Okay. I would like to know of each other's musical catalog, which song do you listen to the most? Ooh, I can say the, the newest uh, K-Play song, uh, Four Letter Words. I mean, that's what it's called, right? Yeah, that is what I'm it's cursing. called. You know what? Like, I heard, uh, we knew you had a song coming and I was, I was like, oh, this is going to be exciting. And it was one of those songs that like destroys you immediately. You're like, oh, okay. And it's like punch in the face. <laughs> like, you know, you kind of keep on getting knocked over. It was one yeah. of those kinds of songs. So, yeah, so that that's my favorite. Okay, well, thank you for helping me to also promote my new music um i i mean i think for for nostalgic reasons to be honest with you knocking at the door is i mean i really love that song but i think anytime you as a kind of an outsider to a project have this little connection to something it it creates this bond with it so just like being there when you were doing that and hearing like an early bounce and we're all sitting in the, the control room and listening to it um I love that song. And I think, you know, one of the things that I really like about you, Max, as a singer and as a vocalist, and obviously I've seen you live, is just there's a there's so much passion and like earnest power in your voice. And I feel like that song, and I think you can get it too, amongst others as well, but like that song to me really captures that. And I and I love that. Wow, oh, thanks, Christine. Um, all right. Well, that feels pretty good for a chat. That was a little <laughs> different, but it felt yes. good. <laughs> Lux, amazing shirt, by the way. That is a, I remember that was, you got that at Blueberry Hill. I remember, I remember yep. the exact show where you got that shirt. Yep. 2010. Yeah. That was like, that's yeah, right. Or 2011, um, 2011 I think it was your I birthday. Think, we had champagne. Yeah. I think. It was your birthday. Yeah, and that was at Blueberry Hill, right? 2010 was the EP. That shirt yeah, is 2010 late. was the EP. So that, that shirt is later. That shirt yeah, is later. Life is a dog. Life is a dog. Maybe. So 2013. And actually, fun anyway. fact, you know. got that shirt when I opened up for X Ambassadors at Blueberry Hill. Uh, wow. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And that, that, um, Zen was so incredible and so powerful. I just love whatever community y'all are making, grandson, uh, Blue Stones, like seeing all of this like power and all of you guys working together it's like the cool kids table or also <laughs> nerdy kid table and the music kid table or right. the table you want to be at and here's my favorite part about that table is that it's the table that gives a shit about other yeah, people yeah yeah and is. that that is the table that i want to sit at yeah. is the one where people care about other people yeah. that's that's the one you guys are so great both of you and we appreciate and always appreciate your time and cannot wait to see you in st louis cannot uh, yes likewise. thank you guys so much it was so good to see you yeah great to see you Nice okay, to see take you care, too. everybody. This was fun. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.